the Medic Framework, one of the most common sales frameworks used by us salespeople on a global scale. But what exactly is it? And can you use it to help move your prospects along the sales cycle? Will I scream out Medic at the top of my lungs? Yes. Keep watching to find out more. What's going on, sales family? It's Fairhead from Sales Unveiled once again, helping slash through uh, uh, all of the misconceptions around sales and giving you some practical advice you can use in your day-to-day -day careers. To the untrained or lazy eye, moving a prospect who's unaware or uninterested in our product to the point where they're actually willing to buy the products that we're selling seems like witchcraft or wizardry. Now, whilst I definitely resemble an Asian Harry Potter when I put my glasses on, the truth of the matter is that salespeople often rely on tried and tested sales frameworks to help us move our prospects through the sales cycle. Now, these sales frameworks definitely add a little bit of structure to our sales cadences better allowing us to qualify our prospects more and aligning them to our ideal client profiles. So one of the most popular sales frameworks out there, especially at the moment actually, is the Medic sales framework, which has grown massively in popularity over the past few years. So in the video today, we're gonna to cover exactly what Medic stands for and how you can use it in your sales process. Bit of a bonus here, guys, as well. You're gonna to wanna to stick around to the end of the video where I give my recommendation on if it is actually a good sales framework for you to use there as well. Let's jump into it. M, metrics. So the M in Medic stands for metrics and simply put, it allows the customer to see exactly how our product can help solve their problems through specific metrics. For example, let's say we're working for a HR team and we're selling a product to a prospect for £100,000. Now this £100,000 product saves the customer around about 20% on turnover costs, saving the organization around about £250,000 per year. What we've demonstrated there is a £150,000 saving for that organization by investing £100,000, which is a 150% increase. By putting facts and figures in that particular way, you're much more likely to be able to move the prospect along the sales cycle, which is the name of the game really, isn't it? It's all about getting your prospect to see the economic value of the savings that you can make them. E, the economic buyer. So the economic buyer in an organization is the person who actually makes the decisions about whether they're able to move forward with your product or not. I mean, it can be really, really nice to have a prospect who you speak to on a day-to-day -day basis, who you really get on with, who makes you feel nice and happy and fluffy and all those nice fantastical things at the end of your calls and meetings. But the truth of the matter is that if they don't have the ability to sign up on projects or any of those kinds of things, then you're kind of barking up the wrong tree. So you want to make sure that the prospects that you're reaching out to either directly report to the decision makers or are the decision makers there themselves. You won't be able to do that in every situation but we want to do this as early as possible to really save us a lot of hassle further on down the line. Speaking from experience on this one guys. Never again. D, decision criteria. So as people we're quite selfish actually if you think about it and we think that all people come to the same decision making process in the same particular way. I mean, same goes for myself as well. I mean, you know, the type of car that I'm gonna be interested in buying in a couple of months time, hopefully, as you know, a late 20 something with a receding hairline is gonna be vastly different probably from the type of cars that you're maybe thinking of buying. The same then goes for the companies that you're prospecting. So it's really important that we get a good and clear and full understanding of how the organization you're prospecting will come to making the decisions in terms of going with your product. Now, more often than not, the organizations that you're speaking to will actually be directly comparing you against your competitors, especially if you're working inbound leads. I'm gonna to link to a couple of emails from my inbound leads just in case you're interested in them, I wanna say around here-ish. That being said, it's really important that you get a full idea and a full picture of the decision-making criteria that they're going to use to compare you against your competitors. Now, decision criteria can cover a wide variety of different things, whether it's you know the support and aftercare that you'll provide, return on investment, and most importantly, and one of the things that we can't avoid, price. Yay. So it's very important then that we get a good idea of what these things are well before we start presenting so we have an idea of what we're going up against. D, decision process. So what's the other DC? No, not that one that one's better, will tell you how the decision has been made. The decision process is the physical process of making that decision. This will cover things like what the formal decision making process is like, as well as the time scales around making an actual decision. For example, I work in the SaaS sector and I have done probably for longer than I want to admit actually, but that being said, there's a lot of regulation that comes along selling software. So for example, GDPR regulations, legal contracts going back and forth, all of those kinds of things, which all factor into the decision process as well. Unfortunately, sales isn't as simple as just sending this product and having it signed off there and then on the spot. There's a lot that goes into making these decisions, which is why understanding what the decision process is, is so important. I identify pain. A little bit of pain didn't hurt anyone. 
unless you're me and you're incredibly clumsy and you're covered in bruises like and subscribe. One of the most important parts of the framework then, and one of the biggest takeaways you should take from the video today is the identifying pain piece. I mean, at the end of the day, you can have as many nice conversations with the prospect as possible, but if there is no pain that they're facing and you can't identify it, then you're just wasting your time and trying to sell to them. Now, with all that being said, please don't use this as an excuse to not dig a little bit deeper by asking open questions. It's one of the most important aspects of the sales process because often at times, our prospects don't actually understand what their pain points are until we start asking these questions. Let me give you an example. Let's say I was selling you, um, I don't know, I haven't got my phone on me because I'm recording on it, but let's say I was selling you Fahed Nikas's phone. Let's say I've got a phone company. Now, if I were to ask you directly and call, call you out the blue and say, hey, would you like to buy a phone? 95% of you probably tell me to F off, you know, because you're not in the marketplace at this particular time. But if I were to start that conversation by, you know, building rapport at the start of that call and then asking things like, you know, what phone do you currently have? What do you enjoy about the phone? If you had a magic wand that can change one particular thing about that phone, what would it be? That allows them to kind of start thinking and really start identifying the pain points themselves that you can then use, not against them, but kind of use to really identify and position your product in the best place possible. And finally, C champion. So building a champion is one of the most important things that we can do as salespeople with the organizations that we speak to. This can definitely be challenging because sometimes the decision makers aren't exactly the same people that are our champions in the organization. And especially as you know, time goes by and the sales process gets longer, the more complex the solutions that we're selling are, it's really, really important then that we really try to find the right people and who's going to benefit the most from using our product. So for example, let's say if we're speaking to a HR team and we're selling a HR product, obviously our champions will probably be the HR managers and the HR directors, but the main decision makers might be the financial team. By building these champions in the HR team, it's really gonna streamline the process and help allow us to build a lot of internal stakeholders when sometimes we might not be directly involved in the decision-making process that the organization has there as well. So it's always worthwhile trying to build as many champions in a company as you can. Are you interested in a bonus? So what are my thoughts about the medic framework overall? Is it good? I would definitely recommend using this and it really does help the medic framework specifically in adding some structure to our sales process. Regardless of if you're you know, an account executive or a sales rep or whatever role you're really doing, it can really help add that structure. And you're probably doing some of these things already to be fair. So if I had a critique of the medic framework, it would be that you can't use it literally for every single prospect you're dealing with. I mean, after all, you have to understand the pain first before you go and understand the decision-making process. So there's some things to work out there with regards to that. Also identifying champions and decision-makers can sometimes seem a little bit contradictory because their roles are very different from each other. But overall, I think it's a fantastic tool. Think of it more as you know a framework as opposed to a general tick box that you've got to go from point one to point two to point three or M-E-D-D-I-C. Nail that one somehow, even though my spelling's atrocious. What's that, Magneto? You want them to leave a comment down below? Can't believe I just did that on camera. Um, guys, I want you to leave a comment down below to let me know if you've actually used the Medic framework before, like I've done in my notes here. It'd be really interesting to sort of see the results that you've got on the back of that. If you're interested in more sales content, please do like and subscribe. We've got regular videos out every single Monday about general sales tips that you can use in your career to help make you a better salesperson overall. I'll see you in the next video. Got a couple of really exciting ones up over in the next couple of weeks or so and uh, excited to see you in the next one. See you then. Have a good one. Bye.